Hey guys, welcome to section 5.1. In this section, we'll talk about how to multiply and divide rational expressions. Let's get started. So a definition first, so that we know what we're dealing with. A rational expression is just a ratio or a fraction, that's another word that we could use for a ratio, of two polynomials. So if you have one polynomial divided by another polynomial, that makes this a rational expression. Remember again the difference between an expression and an equation. An expression lacks an equal sign. Now if you give something an equal sign in those two sides to um, the mathematical structure, that becomes or that makes it an equation. So these are examples of expressions that we've dealt with in the past individually. So you might have seen just 4x squared plus 7x minus 9. You might have also just seen x squared plus 1 by itself. But when we write them as a ratio or as a fraction, we call them rational expressions. So there's a couple of things we can do. In this section, we'll talk about how to multiply and divide them. In the next section, we'll talk about how to add and subtract them. So to simplify a rational expression, what we have to do is we have to factor both the numerator and the denominator, and then cancel out the stuff that can be canceled out. So an example of this can be seen as x squared plus 6x plus 9 all over x squared minus 9. So the first step is factor the numerator if possible, factor the denominator if possible. And here we can see x squared plus 6x plus 9. If we go through our factoring decision tree, the first thing we should be thinking of is a GCF. Because the, one of the coefficients is a 1, this expression does not have a GCF. The next thing we have to ask ourselves is how many terms? Well, this problem has three terms, or this expression has three terms in it. So the first thing we try to use are one of the two formulas for perfect squares. And we see that it does fit it perfectly. Because we can find the square root of x squared, it's just x. We can find the square root of 9, it's 3. And then if we were to multiply these two terms and double it, we see that we get 6x. So x times 3 is 3x, times 2 is 6x. So we know that this numerator is a perfect square, and it factors to x plus 3 times x plus 3. You have two of them. Uh, in the past, you might have also seen this as x plus 3, the quantity squared. Well, writing it twice is the same as just writing a square on top. x squared minus 9, the first thing we think of is the GCF. This expression doesn't have any. The next concern or the next question to ask is how many terms? Well, this problem has two terms in it. And hopefully you can recognize fairly quickly that this is a difference of squares. So a difference of squares factors to a plus b and times a minus b. So this factors to x plus 3 times x minus 3. Again, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. Now you'll notice that I have x plus 3 times x plus 3 in the numerator. I have x plus 3 times x minus 3 in the denominator. I can cancel both the x plus 3s, and then I'm left over with just this x plus 3 that stays on top, and the x minus 3 that's on the bottom stays on the bottom. So as we can see from this example, simplifying a rational expression is the same as reducing a fraction to its lowest terms. So just as a friendly reminder, if you were asked to reduce 20 over 17 to its lowest terms, now we don't ever actually do this, but I did it so I could get the point across. 20 can be factored into 2 times 10. 14 can be factored into 2 times 7. And then I can cancel the 2 on top with the 2 on the bottom. So notice only the 2's cancel out, leaving behind 10 and the 7. 10 on top, 7 on the bottom. If you notice, we did the exact same thing. So we factored x squared plus 6x plus 9. Here we factored the 20. The two factors were x plus 3 times x plus 3. The two factors were 2 times 10. And the factors of the denominator were x plus 3 times x minus 3. The factors of the denominator, 14, were 2 times 7. 
At this stage, we can see that we're just left behind with what was left over, x plus 3 and x minus 3. And here we were left with 10 over 7, so that turned out to be the answer. So you can see that the terms on top and bottom only cancel if you have products across the top and bottom. So these are, I wrote these words in red because I need to make sure you guys understand and internalize this. The only reason we were allowed to cancel x plus 3 on top with x plus 3 on the bottom is because these terms were being multiplied across the top and across the bottom. So if there were a plus sign in the middle here, if it were x plus 3 plus x plus 3, we could not cancel these two terms out. In order to cancel something on top with something on the bottom, we have to have a product in the middle. Now here's an example, the whole thing is in red because this is an example of what you should never, ever, 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 ever do. So the question said to reduce seven plus five over one plus five, what you cannot do, and I put this up front and center so that you never, ever, ever do this, you cannot cancel the five on top with the five on the bottom to uh, be left with seven over one, which is seven. You can never, ever, 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 ever do this. You are not allowed to cancel unless you have a product or you haven't factored yet. So, or this factoring part will come in handy when we start doing the problems in algebra. But what you're supposed to do is simplify first. So seven plus five would be 12. One plus five would be six. 12 over six would be two. So the answer to this problem is two, it's not seven. If you get seven, you're doing an illegal operation. This is not permitted. Oh, I have the answer right here. So you can add these two terms to get 12. One plus five gives you six. You can factor the 12 into two times six. And because this is a product up on top and on the bottom, I just have one term, I can cancel the two sixes out, leaving behind a two. Couple more examples, let's say you have x squared plus four x plus four, all over x squared minus four. Hopefully at this stage, you're starting to get better with recognizing when to use the formulas and when not to. So we can see that this doesn't have a GCF and it's three terms and it is a perfect square. And it, in fact, it's the perfect square of x plus two. So the numerator factors to x plus two times x plus two the denominator is a difference of squares with no GCF, so it factors to x plus two times x minus two. Because I have a product here and a product here, I can cancel a term on top with a term on the bottom. So x plus two on top cancels with the x plus two on the bottom, leaving behind x plus two on top, x minus two on the bottom. Oops, that's a typo, that should say minus. Uh, please fix this as you're taking notes. This should not be a plus, this should be a minus. Next example, let's say we have to simplify 27x to the third minus 64y to the third, all over 9x squared plus 12xy plus 16y squared. So again, we start factoring, and if we factor the numerator, we see that there's no GCF between these two terms. We cannot divide 27 and 64 by some numbers in common. So we move on to the next question, which is how many terms we have. We see obviously we have two terms. So we can factor this using a difference of cubes. The difference of cubes formula, if you know the formula, will give you the factors 3x minus 4y times 9x squared plus 12xy plus 16y squared. And if you notice, we didn't have to touch the bottom because that's the same exact term I have on top. Because there's a product here, when you factor, you are creating products by, that, by, by completing that process. So by virtue of us having factored this, we can see that this cancels with this term on the bottom, leaving behind just 3x minus 4y as the answer. And that's it for this problem. There's nothing else to do. A couple more examples. Let's say we have to simplify 28 over 8x squared minus 16. So we factor the top, factor the bottom. The 28 is just a single term, so it just comes along for the ride. 8x squared minus 16, I see that I have a GCF of 8 because I can divide 8 and 16 both by 8. 
So if I factor an eight out, the first thing I do is I open a set of parentheses. And then I divide each one of these terms by the GCF. So if I divide eight x squared by eight, I get x squared. When I divide negative 16 by eight, I get negative two. So now what we can do is we can reduce the factor, we can reduce the fraction 28 over eight by four, because four goes into 28 seven times, and four goes into eight twice. We cannot touch this because, well, first of all, there's no GCF. There's two terms, so you might think, oh, I can use a difference of squares. But the problem is two is not a perfect square. We don't know what the square root of two is. So we leave this as it is because it's prime. So if it's not a difference of squares, it certainly cannot be a sum of squares because, well, we have a minus sign. It cannot be a difference of squares for the same, or a difference of cubes for the same reason. And it cannot be a uh, difference or a sum of cubes, in fact, because you don't have a cube there. So if there is no GCF and the four formulas don't work for two terms, we declare this to be prime. That means we cannot go any further. This problem is finished. For the following example, we see 9x minus 3 all over 18x minus 6. We notice that we can factor out a GCF of 3. So factoring a GCF of 3 out leaves us with 3x minus 1. Factoring a 6 out of the denominator, the GCF 6, leaves us with also 3x minus 1. Again, because I have a product here and a product here, I can cancel these two terms out. Leaving behind the 3 over 6, which we can reduce down to 1 over 2. A slightly more involved example, uh, similar to the ones that you're going to see in the packet. The previous ones were just to get the point across that you can, you have to factor and you can only divide or cancel something on top with something on the bottom if you have products across the top and products across the bottom. So let's say we have to factor x squared minus 25 first. Well, we see that the coefficient of x squared is one, so there's no GCF. So we come down to the next question, which is how many terms? There's two terms in the problem. And immediately we see that this is a difference of squares. So x squared minus 25 can get factored to x plus five times x minus five using the formula. And then for the denominator, I see that there is no GCF because one of the coefficients is one. I see that I have three terms. So first I think of the formulas. I can find the square root of two, or sorry, x squared, but I cannot find the square root of 15. So the formulas don't apply. I see that the coefficient of x squared is one, so I can use the AC method. Where I multiply a and c, so one times 15 is 15, and then I write down all the factors of 15. So 1, 15, negative 1, negative 15, 3 and 5, negative 3, negative 5, and this is it. There's no other factors. And of these four pairs, 3 and 5 add up to 8 and multiply to give me 15. So this expression, I can jump directly to the answer, and the factors are x plus 3 times x plus 5. So here we can see that the numerator got factored into x plus 5 times x minus 5 because of the difference of squares. The denominator got factored into x plus 3 times x plus 5. Both of these terms are the same, so I can cancel them out. But the only reason I'm allowed to cancel is because I have a product on top and a product on the bottom. So what I'm left behind with is x minus 5 over x, x plus 3, which is the answer. Another question, so here, all the previous questions we've done so far have just been standalone problems. So you have a single fraction, you have uh, an expression over an expression. Now we're moving on into how to multiply these rational expressions together. But this is no more difficult than just doing one of them at a time. So all this boils down to is just factoring. You factor this, factor this, factor this, factor this, and because there's a product in the middle, you can cancel anything on top with anything on the bottom. That's it, it's just a factoring question. So x squared minus nine is a difference of squares, it factors to x plus three times x minus three. x squared plus x minus 20, there's no GCF because the coefficient is one. 
I have three terms, so I think of the formulas. I can find the square root of x squared, but I cannot find the square root of negative 20, so the formulas don't apply. The coefficient of x squared is 1, so I use the AC method. So 1 times negative 20 gives me negative 20, and then I can find all the factors of negative 20. Here they are. And of these factors, the factor that adds up to positive 1 is negative 4 and positive 5. So my factors become x plus 5 times x minus 4. So on this slide, what I've done is I've found the factors of the numerator and the denominator of this left expression. On the next slide, let's find the factors of the other two, exp uh, of the other two terms, x squared minus 8x plus 16 and 3x plus 9. So looking at the first one, we see that there's no GCF because the coefficient of x squared is 1. The next thing that we think about is how many terms. I have three. The first thing I should be thinking about with three terms is the formulas. Can I find the square root of x squared? Yes. Can I find the square root of 16? Also yes. So the formulas become a choice. So I get x, which is the square root of x squared, minus, because the middle sign is a, is a negative, a 4, which is the square root of 16, the quantity squared. And before I can move on, I have to make sure that the middle term checks out. So x times 4 gives me 4x. Doubling that gives me 8x. So 2 times x times 4 gives me 8x, which is what I have in the middle. So I put a little check mark next to it to say that this factors into this. And instead of writing x minus 4 the quantity squared, I could have just written x minus 4 times x minus 4, the same thing written twice. Here we have 3x plus 9, that's the last term that we have to factor, the denominator. Here we can see that there's the GCF of 3, so factoring that out gives us x plus 3, and that's about it, there's nothing else to do with this. So rewriting the problem, this is just the problem written again, and these are all the factors that we found. So x plus 3, x minus 3 for the difference of squares, and all the other factors just kind of get populated. Now what I want you to observe is, I have a product in the middle here, I have a product in the middle here, I have a product in the middle there. So all the way across the top, I have products. I have a product in the middle here, this product multiplies these two terms as well, and then I have a product in the middle here. So I have products all the way across the top and products all the way across the bottom. What that allows me to do is I can cancel anything on top with anything on the bottom. So I have an x plus 3 term here, and I also have an x plus 3 term here. So I can cancel those two out. They don't have to be one on top of each other in order to cancel. The multiplication basically just turns into a one big problem. I have an x minus 4 on, in the numerator. I have an x minus 4 in the denominator, so I can cancel these two out. And then what remains, everything that remains that I could not cancel out, x minus 3 comes along for the ride, x minus 4 comes along for the ride, x plus 5 comes along, and then the 3 comes along as well. So this is it. This is my answer to this problem. Ultimately, all this boils down to is just factor, cancel, and write down your answer. Let's look at a division problem or a division example next. So here we have to remember our old friend keep change flip. That's basically the crux of the whole thing. If you remember this, you can just change this problem into one that we just in fact solved with multiplication. So in order to divide two fractions or divide two expressions, we have to remember to keep the first one the same, change the division to a product, and then flip the second or the denominator. And if we do that, we're left with the same thing as the first one, a multiply or multiplication by x squared plus x minus two, all over 5x squared plus 15x. So this term just goes to the bottom. In order to factor the numerator, we can see that there's a GCF of, or there's a coefficient of one here and here, so we cannot find a GCF for this problem. There's three terms, so we consider the formulas first, but they cannot be used because we cannot find the square root of negative 12. So we come down to the AC method because A is one. So we find factors of A times C, which is negative 12. All these factors are listed here, 
And the only ones that add up to negative 1 are negative 4 and positive 3. Because we're using the AC method, we jump directly to our answer. Similarly, the exact same thought process goes into factoring this. We know that we can only use the AC method because square root of negative 8 is not possible. There is no GCF because one of the coefficients is 1. And then factoring out negative 8 gives us negative 2 as a sum only with 2 and negative 4. So x minus 4 and x plus 2 turn out to be our answers. Looking at the denominators on the next page, so x squared minus x minus 2, we see that there's no GCF. Formulas don't work with the three terms because we cannot find the square root of negative 2. So we're stuck with the AC method because A is 1. So factoring negative 2 gives us negative 1 and 2, 1 and negative 2. And the only factors that add up to positive 1 are x plus 2 and x minus 1. So those are the two factors for this. And then finally for here, the last denominator, we see that we have a GCF of 5x. So we factor the 5x out and we're left behind with x plus 3. So this is just the question again, and I rewrote all the factors. We notice that all the way across the top, we have products all the way across the bottom, we have products as well. So x minus four cancels with x minus four, x plus three cancels with the x plus three, x plus two cancels with the x plus two. And then the only two terms that remain are x minus one over five x. So that's what we write down as our answer. Now this I wrote in a different color because I want to make sure that you understand this problem and you internalize this. Please, please, please pay very close attention to this. This might look very similar to the previous problem we just solved, except instead of a product, I changed it to a plus. So I copied the factors again. All of these factors are the same. All of these factors are the same. Here we see that x minus four on top cancels with the x minus four on the bottom. The reason why I can do this is because I have a product across the top and a product across the bottom. So I can cancel these two. However, I am done here. I cannot do anything else because this x plus three cannot be canceled with this x plus three on the bottom. I do not have a product in the middle. This x plus two on the bottom cannot be canceled with this, this x plus two on top because I do not have a product in the middle. We'll talk about how to deal with these problems in the next section on how to proceed with this. But please, please, please do not cancel unless you have products everywhere across the top or everywhere across the bottom. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please, as always, feel free to reach out. Have a nice evening.